I'm Dr. Bill Bensinger. I'm here at the 2007 American Society of Clinical Oncology annual meeting here in Chicago. I just completed the educational session on transplantation for multiple myeloma, and I think the main message is that uh, autologous stem cell transplant is still an important treatment option for patients, either part of their initial therapy or after other uh, treatment modalities have failed to work in patients. Uh, the treatment is uh, safe with uh, very low morbidity and mortality, and uh, it has been shown to be effective in improving uh, the response rates, uh, improving disease-free interval, and in some studies, improving overall survival. An autologous transplant is a tool or technique that allows us to deliver very high doses of chemotherapy. The high-dose chemotherapy is designed to eradicate most or all of the myeloma cells from the patient. The biggest side effect of high-dose therapy is that it also invariably destroys bone marrow function. And a transplant is a tool to use to rescue the bone marrow function after the high-dose therapy is delivered. So, in general, what happens is a patient will receive initial induction therapy, and after their initial therapy, uh, we will then harvest stem cells. Traditionally, this has been chemotherapy regimens such as VAD, but more recently is being replaced by some of the newer combinations that include thalidomide and dexamethasone, lenalidomide and dexamethasone, or bortezomib and dexamethasone. After patients receive this initial treatment, usually for between two and four cycles, we collect the stem cells from their blood through a technique we call mobilization. Mobilization involves treating a patient with a hormone or growth factor called GCSF, or the brand name is Nupagen. This is used to stimulate white cell production and causes the stem cells to move from the bone marrow into the bloodstream for a period of several days. This technique is called mobilization. Patients can then be collected uh, by hooking them up to a machine called a blood cell separator, which takes the blood uh, from a vein, spins it through a centrifugal bowl that separates the blood into component parts, and the white blood cell fraction is then collected. This is the fraction that's rich in stem cells. Those stem cells can then be uh, preserved through a process of special freezing we call cryopreservation. The collections take anywhere from one to four days depending on how rich the stem cells are in the patient's blood. Once those collections are complete, we can then uh, deliver the high-dose chemotherapy. The standard regimen that is used is melphalan in a very high dose of 200 milligram per meter square. Melphalan is highly effective at destroying the myeloma cells, but has two major side effects. One is it destroys bone marrow function, and that's the, what the purpose of the, the stem cell collection is for. The second big side effect is what we call mucositis, and this is damage to the lining of the mouth and throat and lower GI tract. This is a self-limited process, but for a period of about a week to 10 days, the patient can uh, have significant mouth pain and throat soreness and lower GI symptoms such as nausea or diarrhea. After a period of time, the, gut, the GI tract heals up and the patients recover from this. The stem cells that were collected are reinfused usually two days after the high dose melphalan and after about 10 days begin to work and restore blood and bone marrow function. Now response is measured by checking the bone marrow for abnormal plasma cells, uh, and by checking the blood or urine for the presence of monoclonal protein. 
we define a complete response as a complete disappearance of all evidence of myeloma. And that means that very sensitive testing that we term immunofixation is negative for any abnormal protein in either the blood or the urine. Furthermore, the bone marrow must be free of any abnormal uh, myeloma cells. There are lesser degrees. There is what's called a near-complete response where the protein electrophoresis pattern is normal in the blood and urine, but by the immunofixation test, we can still detect a small amount of protein. There are lesser degrees, such as what we call a partial response, which is about a 50 to 75 percent reduction in either the blood or urine monoclonal protein. Now, the reason we believe response, complete response and near complete response is important is that there are many, many studies that have shown that patients who achieve a complete response have a better outcome than patients who achieve lesser degrees of responses. And so this is a, an important endpoint in terms of getting uh, the maximum benefit from a transplant. One approach to improving on a single transplant is to perform a tandem transplant. And there are several studies that have compared outcomes of patients uh, who have received either a single autologous transplant or a tandem transplant. And in general, there is a small benefit to getting two transplants. But the important thing is that the subgroup analysis of who benefits uh, shows that if you achieve a complete response or near complete response with one transplant and then go on to a second transplant, these patients don't do any better than patients who've only had a single transplant and get a complete response or near complete response. The major benefit to a second transplant occurs in patients who have either stable disease, a minimal response, or a partial response to the first transplant. There is another type of transplant that involves using stem cells from a donor. We call this an allogeneic transplant, and most commonly this is a brother or a sister who is what we term HLA matched, which means tissue matched. You have about a one in four chance that a brother or a sister will match with you. An allogeneic transplant is a little different technique in that it involves entirely replacing the bone marrow with that of the donor cells. Those cells then establish a new immune system in the patient and in the process have the capacity to seek out and destroy uh, malignant myeloma cells. We term that process a graft versus myeloma effect. And while it is a real effect, it, it doesn't work very well for patients that have a large volume of myeloma. The problem with allogeneic transplants has been very high transplant-related mortality due to complications of infection and graft-versus-host disease and damage from the high-dose conditioning regimen. We've significantly improved on the safety of these transplants by using reduced intensity conditioning regimens. They're often referred to as, quote, mini transplants, but they use a very low dose of drugs to suppress the patient's immune system so that they accept the graft from the donor. Those donor cells then are, are relied on to eradicate any myeloma cells. Now, these reduced intensity transplants clearly are safer, but they do not seem to work very well in patients who have a large tumor burden and a lot of myeloma. So the safest and most effective way to do these is with a tandem transplant, whereby first patients have an autologous stem cell transplant, recover from the side effects of that, and then two to four months later have this reduced intensity transplant from their donor. Uh, using this approach, the transplant-related mortality can be as low as 10 to 15 percent, with uh, at least two-thirds of patients achieving complete remissions, and many of these remissions now are, are seen to be durable for five years or more.